Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today I am presenting on age-related macular degeneration, and our prime focus will be on dry ARMD. So to introduce, it is a degenerative disorder affecting the macula. It is characterized by clinical findings, including drusen and RPE changes. And the, it is the, one of the most common cause of irreversible visual loss. So the epidemiology it is a leading cause of severe vision loss in individuals more than 55 years of age in the developed world. It, is, it contributes to about 6 to 9% of legal blindness globally. According to the Beaver Dam Eye study, it has reported an overall prevalence of 1.6% ARMD, a 1.2% prevalence of exudative disease, a 0.6% of geographic atrophy. Uh, the a early a AMD was 3.9% uh, between 43 to 54 years of age and in 22.8% in patients who are beyond 75 years of age. So the risk factors, the main risk factor is age. It is a non-modifiable factor. In resource-rich countries, it is said that about 10% of people over the age of 65 and 25% over the age of 75 years have AMD. They have said about the age of 55, every decade, there is a, a quadruple increase in incidence of uh, AMD. So the uh, coming to the environmental risk factors, smoking is, remains the most important risk factor, which is modifiable. Diet, uh, a high, a better diet, including lutein, zeaxanthin, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acid has a protective role. And exercise, it is said that at least a minimum of three hours per week of exercise is protective. Then cardiovascular disease has a, a correlation with the uh, severity, uh, with the progression of the disease. Other factors like hypertension, atherosclerosis, high BMI, diabetes mellitus, higher plasma, fibrinogen, hyperlipidemia, they, are, they have all equivocal roles. The next, coming to the genetic risk factors, the two major susceptibility genes for AMD are CFH, which codes for complement factor H and ARMS2 gene. So the CFH mutation, it confers a 4.6-fold increased risk of AMD when heterozygous and a 7.4-fold increased risk when it is homozygous. The ARMS2 mutation confers a 2.7-fold increased risk for AMD when heterozygous and 8.2 if homozygous. If both the genes are present homos in a homozygous manner, the risk for AMD is increased to 50 folds. But uh, there is no proven role for doing genetic analysis for earlier diagnosis of AMD. Uh, coming to the pathogenesis, uh, there is a genetic susceptibility, then aging-related disruption of normal retinal homeostasis, uh, along with impaired lipid metabolism, immune activation, progress progression to chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, and an ECM dysfunction. So, uh, in the normal uh, Age-related changes in retina and RPE, for normal aging, the, uh, the clinical changes seen include enlarging foveal avascular zone, a decreased density of macular choroidal capillaries, decreased macular choroidal thickness on OCT, and increased macular autofluorescence, reduction in rod density and ganglion cell density. Uh, the RPE cells, there is loss of RPE cells. Uh, and it uh, correlates with the photoreceptor cell loss. There is accumulation of lipofuscin, melanolysosomes, melanolipofuscin granules, increased pleomorphism and a loss of basal infoldings. There is increased thickness of Brooks membrane where there is a collection of fibrillary type 1 collagen and fibrous long spacing collagen in the outer collagen zone. Then there is increased lipid content of the Brooks membrane and uh, increased hyalinization and patchy basophilia. The two uh, deposits that are seen include the basal laminar and the basal linear deposits. The laminar deposits are located between the plasma membrane and the basement membrane of the RPE cell. It starts as, as patchy deposits and becomes continuous uh, layer and thickens with time. The basal linear deposits are seen uh, between external to the basement membrane of the RPE and inner collagenous zone of the Brooks membrane. And these are the precursor of soft drusen. There is also associated reduced thickness of middle choroidal vascular layer. So in a non-neovascular AMD, the defining lesion is the drusen and other indicators are abnormalities of the RP, including hyperpigmentation and atrophy. So uh, this picture sums up the entire uh, pathogenesis behind AMD. Uh, the 
main factors including the aging changes the genetic susceptibility and an environmental risk factors which cause a loss of para inflammation control lip a lipid deposition oxidative stress and impaired ecm maintenance which cause the basal laminar and the basal um, linear deposits as we can see uh, in the picture in the right hand side okay <clears throat> so deposits between the rpe and the brooks membrane inhibit the passage of nutrients and oxygen from the choroid to the rpe there is accumulation of debris within the rpe cell which leads to cellular injury there is uncontrolled activation of the alternate complement pathway and inadequate inhibition the complement factor h is required to inhibit the active activation of alternate complement pathway then also polymorphism is present which leads to impaired activity of the cfh and uncontrolled complement activation complement mediated inflammation results uh, oxidative stress to the rp cell causes complement activation also presence of proangiogenic factors and antiangiogenic factors the imbalance between them is going to result in uh, angiogenesis then uh, brooks membrane disrupts due to imbalance between the matrix metalloproteinase and their inhibitors and the tissue inhibitors of helloproteinase the neo vascular complex beneath the rpe is termed as type 1 cnvm and beneath the retina is termed as type 2 cnvm um so uh, if we do a clinical classification of age related macular degeneration it is classified as follows um presence of only droplets and no amd pigmentary abnormalities is termed as normal aging changes where droplets are a newly proposed term for small drusen which are less than 63 microns then early amd is termed when there is there, there is presence of medium drusen which are between 63 and 125 microns intermediate amd is where there is large drusen above 125 microns any amd pigmentary uh, abnormalities also might be present then in late amd there is neo vascular amd and or any presence of geographical atrophy then there is international armd epidemiological study group which terms early age related maculopathy as soft drusen more than 63 microns uh, hyperpigmentation associated with drusen depigmentation associated with drusen where vision is not a criterion the late age related maculopathy includes dry amd or wet amd and the intermediate state uh, includes extensive drusen more than 125 microns without advanced disease so uh, there's the clinical age related maculopathy staging where grade 1 is uh, no or less than 10 small drusen without pigment abnormalities grade 2 is more than 10 small or less than 15 intermediate or pigment abnormalities associated with arm uh, drusen uh, rp changes or it or uh, both could be present in grade 3 there are more than 15 intermediate drusen or any large drusen no drusenoid pd and drusenoid pd present Uh, in grade four, the geographic atrophy is present with involvement of macular cell or central geographic atrophy of more than three fifty microns in size. In grade five, exudative AMD, including non-drusenoid PAD, serous or hemorrhagic retinal detachment (CNVM) uh, could be present. Serous PAD without or with a CNVM could be there. So, if we just classify as dry AMD, which includes non-exudative, non-neovascular, and geographic atrophy being the advanced stage, and wet ARMD as the exudative changes, neovascular, CNV, and uh, pigment epithelial detachment. So, clinical features of ARMD, uh, including drusen, these are small round yellow lesions located along the basal surface of RP, mostly in the post equatorial retina. Uh, histopathologically, they lie between the basement membrane of RP and the inner collagen zone of Brooks membrane and contain and contain uh, the uh, debris which is present. They contain fats, phospholipids, and other complements. So, hard drusen uh, are defined uh, are uh, well defined. Uh, with well defined margins they are smaller they are less than 125 microns and they tend to occur in clusters uh, they do not signify any increased risk of amd a fusion of cluster of hard drusens may mimic soft drusen which is called as pseudo soft drusen but the margins remain discrete whereas opposed to soft drusen which are larger and have indistinct borders uh, then there is granular soft drusen which form uh, which is formed from breakdown of hard drusen to around 250 microns and there is membranous soft drusen which is 63 and 250 microns and larger drusen which have fluid component which is more than 1000 microns these are termed as drusenoid rpe detachments fluorocin uh, tends to fill a drusenoid pd slowly as compared to a serous pd 
uh, coming to reticular drusen, uh, network of yellowish or flat lesions may be seen. These are also known as pseudo drusen and have a higher risk of CNVM formation. Uh, the main difference that we can see is these are the the right hand side picture shows a uh, RPE uh, elevation. So uh, these are sub RPE are the or the drusen and the pseudo drusen. The reticular drusen are not sub RPE. Then coming to non-geographic atrophy, uh, it is a precursor of geographic atrophy, 175 to 200 micron involvement, RP hypopigmentation with no distinct borders. Yellow or pink uh, patches may be seen on fl fluorescein fundus or, or angiogram, uh, hyperfluorescence may be seen. OCT areas, uh, RP hyperreflectivity of coroid can be seen. In geographic atrophy, it can be related to drusen or can occur independently of them. Those occurring around the phobia may retain useful uh, central vision for a long time. Uh, disappearance of drusen can be accompanied by progressive geographic atrophy. In the area of atrophy, the outer nuclear layer is atrophic along with the RP and chorio capillaries. The large choroidal vessels are vascularized, are visualized as sclerosed blood vessels due to atrophy. Choroidal neovascularization can occur at the edge of the areas of the geographic atrophy. As we can see in the OCT picture, which is there in the right hand side, we can see hyperfluorescence columns, columns which uh, indicates that there is RPE atrophy in that area. So uh, clinical features, the, in early changes, it is difficult for the patient to work in low luminance levels and low contrast. There, is, there might be visual distortion. Central visual fields defect are associated with late AMD, associated with photoreceptor loss. The test that you can do is uh, usually when we do best corrected visual acuity, we do it with a high contrast and in a bright illumination. So uh, they are detected in a later stage. So for detecting AMD earlier, we can do low luminance visual acuity, contrast sensitivity or dark adaptation. Um, on clinic, clinical evaluation and imaging for dry ARMD, on angiography, uh, FFA shows hyperfluorescence more prominent in geographical, uh, geographic atrophy. Um, the late phase hypofluorescence due to closure of choreo capillaries and medium-sized vessels may be noticed. So auto fundus autofluorescence can also be done and international classification describes around eight types. As we can see here, uh, if there is increase uh, of FFA, FAF uh, surrounding the uh, defect, then uh, directly adjacent to FAF uh, defect and elsewhere, it is termed as diffuse. If uh, only directed adjacent to FAF defect, we can uh, classify this as individual small spots, which is focal or in banded or patchy or reticular fine granular trickling and branching. On uh, OCT, which is the first line investigation of ARMD, the uh, guidance from OCT is used more often than from angiography in deciding on treatment and retreatment. Areas of geographic atrophy seen due to hyperreflectivity of uh, choroid underneath. There is loss of uh, ONL and ALF and ellipsoid layer. Then outer retinal tubulation seen in outer nuclear layer. Uh, then according to the classification of atrophy meeting, uh, they have classified as uh, IRORA and CRORA, where uh, new terms of complete and incomplete RPE and outer retinal atrophy were defined. Complete retinal pigment epithelial and outer retinal atrophy was proposed as an endpoint for atrophy that occurred in the presence of drusen and was defined by the following criteria. First being a region of hypertransmission of at least 250 microns in diameter and a zone of attenuation or disruption of the RPE of at least 250 microns in diameter. And thirdly, ev evidence of overlying photoreceptor degeneration, all occurring in the absence of signs of an RPE tear. tear. So, uh, IRORA is defined on OCT, the same uh, changes, but less than 250 microns in diameter. Uh, si similar to the CRORA, a region of signal hypertransmission into the choroid, a corresponding zone of attenuation or disruption of the RP, and evidence of overlying photoreceptor degeneration, all being less than 250 microns. So, coming to the management, uh, uh, we can uh, start with antioxidant supplementation, lifestyle changes, including exercise, diet. Then a uh, home ampsler chart can be given and the patient can be asked to uh, monitor uh, to uh, 
hold the ancillary uh, ancillary chart at reading distance and with reading connection uniocularly the patient has to see if he can find any spots or any uh, scotomas or any differences from the previous uh, previous examination. Uh, low vision aids can be given in patient who have uh, uh, problems. Experimental surgery have been uh, said like miniature intraocular telescope implantation, retinal translocation surgery and visual prosthesis. So antioxidant supplementation is can be considered in patients with extensive intermediate that is about 63 to 125 micron drusen at least presence of one large drusen and uh, good geographic atrophy in one or both eyes. For late AMD in one eye, it has a greatest benefit in ARDS1. So, uh, age-related eye disease, uh, one, uh, uh, it consisted of uh, giving supplements to the patients, including vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene form of vitamin A and 80 milligram daily of zinc. However, high zinc doses were potentially associated with genitourinary tract problems and there was data suggesting that 25 milligram of zinc may be maximum level. Uh, beta carotene almost certainly increases the incidence of lung cancer in current and former smokers. So, ARDS2 was conducted and uh, they uh, corrected the previous dose by adjusting the beta carotene and zinc components. Uh, they uh, Carotenoids like lute lutein and zeaxanthines were a safe alternative. Then 18% reduction in risk of advanced AMD was seen. Uh, lowering the zinc dose did not lead to a statistical significant prognostic worsening. So, the current recommended daily supplementation based on ARDS2 includes vitamin E of 400 international units, vitamin C 500 mg, lutein 10 mg, zeaxanthine 2 mg, zinc 25 to 80 mg, 80 mg can also be given, uh, copper 2 mg, this may not be required with the lower zinc dose. So, uh, that's it. Come. Okay, good. Uh, can you go back to the slides of OCT? Yes, sir. Yeah, start from the geographic atrophy. Previous ones. Yeah, so in geographic atrophy, can you point out what things you are looking at in the OCT? Uh, one second, sir. So uh, on the OCT, we can see these hyper reflective columns which indicates that there are areas of RP atrophy present over here. And, yeah, so, uh, the light, um, light is traveling more because the RP is absent in that absent. area. Yes, sir. Yeah. And on autofluorescence, we can see that uh, there is loss. So, this also indicates RP loss because there is death of cells over there. And, uh, and what so do you... We can see choroidal vessels underneath this area because the RP is absent. And what do you see in the layers of the retina? Ah, uh, outer uh, nuclear layer atrophy can be observed. Yes, yeah, so outer layers are atrophied. And uh, see, it's very important to look for this one transmission defects. These are uh, suggestive RP atrophy. And also look for the outer retinal layer changes. So, because... If you don't look closely, if you just look at the foveal contour and say, then it you might mistake it as a normal OCT. Okay. So yes. it's very important to look into layers and also for the transmission defects which are there. Next OCT. Yes. OCT. Yes. Yeah. So here, what are the typical things that you are seeing? Uh, we can see this typical RP elevation. Hmm. which indicates drusen in present, then uh, they have shown an uh, band disruption which is present, the ISOS junction. Then yeah. uh, hyper-reflective foci over here are seen, which indicates that the RP have migrated towards the inner side because of underlying deposits. So generally at this stage, what is the typical symptom that patients present with? Uh, uh, metamorphopsia may be present. So, uh, they may be present with slightly reduced vision, metamorphopsia. Okay. Yes, sir. The, so, those are the usual things. So, here you have to look for the, again, ISOS junction. If that is disrupted, yes. then visual uh, effects are more. 
Yes. Sir, I can you repeat what he has uh, just said? Sir, devolutions uh, can be a masquerader for intraretinal fluid. It can be misdiagnosed as wet AMB. Yeah. Check for that before injecting antivirus. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, OCT. Okay. Uh, there is no uh, OCT of disky form scar. So many times we have uh, patients who have advanced uh, ARMD where the uh, the uh, CNVM has already scarred. So I think that is also important OCT to look for because many times you will see some fluid in that region. But if you look at the scarring and uh, loss of junction, then you know that the prognosis is uh, poor. So in such cases, you need not uh, give injection. Okay. So anyway, uh, today's topic was, I think, dry RMD. Uh, one more important thing you told about dry RMD is there is loss of uh, contrast sensitivity or loss of sensitivity to light, right? So these patients are unable to see at lower luminance levels. Okay. So contrast is lost and dark adaptation is prolonged. So uh, it's very important. Pa many patients come to us for cataract surgery and they have dry RMD. So what dry, though OCT may suggest that central fovea is normal, not much of a changes. Patient may still have good visual, potential vision of six by six. But if you see ARMD changes, then it is better to avoid the trifocal and multifocal lenses because it is going to reduce the contrast sensitivity further. Right? Yes. So in such cases, monofocals or EDOF lenses can be preferred. Okay. Okay, sir. So if you have a patient where you where you have to look at the macula and look for any ARMD changes also, not just uh, OCT and you know uh, checking the foveal contour, but also you have to look for the RP changes, which may be more telling con uh, considering that uh, considering the age of the patient, it might show that the sensitivity of the retina has reduced. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, I had a doubt, sir. Yeah. Sir, in uh, geographic atrophy patients, when we see in OPD, should we routinely perform an OCT to rule out uh, wet ARMD changes or just? Uh, yeah, if you cannot see properly the edges and if you such, if the patient is uh, complaining of recent uh, reduction in the vision, then you can do OCT to look for any uh, weight changes at the age of the atrophy. But if clinically you can see that in there is no change. Yeah. They are not seeing any subretinal theme or anything like uh, features of CMVM. Should we still uh, on the safer side do a OCT? In, uh, yeah, for in, uh, the uh, progression, looking for the progression, you can do. So you can compare okay. the previous OCTs. And of course, you have to start the patient on antioxidant, mainly for the other eye also. Like the fellow eye is uh, one where it has more effect as has been shown in studies. Okay. It will prevent progression. Yes. Okay. Any other uh, doubts or anything? Sir, one more thing I wanted to say. Uh, those measurements which were given for the true sense, 63 microns, 123, 125 microns. Mm -hmm. So clinically, how do you judge? Uh, yeah, Nilambika? No, can't, can't hear. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. So the vessels uh, at the optic disc level, um, second. so the vessels have, uh, the vessels leaving at the optic disc level, the margin is uh, corresponds to about uh, 25, 125 micron. So compared to that, if it is larger, then it is considered as a larger disc. Yeah. Okay. That, so that's the way you can judge clinically. Of course, on OCT, you can also measure, but that's not required generally. Okay. Okay, then. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Bye.